Hey good people, it's Tashara from Politics and Fashion here today with another part in my solopreneurship series. And today's video was going to be all about those streams of income that no one tells content creators about. And the reason I think that I feel so passionately about these streams of income is because I do consider myself to be a solopreneur. Like that's the big umbrella that I believe content creation should fall underneath. Uh, solopreneur of course stands for solo entrepreneur. I have been at this thing for about two years. I have been blogging for about 10 years and I have really learned how to maximize multiple streams of income and that is something that I want to share with you all today. I have really dove in deep into all of these areas. I'm already using four out of the five areas. One of them I will be launching very soon. So trust me sis, I got proof of concept around how to get your bag in multiple ways. As a matter of fact, get your bag and get your coat. Okay, we ain't leaving no money on the table. No money shall be left behind and I want to tell you how in today's video. If that sounds good to you then make sure you are following me over on TikTok and on Instagram for daily style and self care inspiration. Like the video, leave a comment, let me know what you think about these ideas and let's get started. The first thing that I feel like the girls are not talking about nearly enough is the money that is to be made on this platform, on YouTube. And learning from my mistakes, y'all, I'm just going to be honest, I wish that I would have given YouTube the attention that I was giving Instagram about five years ago. Um, I talked about that in a previous video about what they don't tell you as a content creator uh, because I think that it is easy for us to fall into the cult of Instagram. I'm just going to be honest, okay? Instagram for me is a promotional tool. It is, of course, where many brand collaborations do reside. But I have been tra transparent with you all about how it is not the end all be all and how it can be very difficult to grow. Just suppose that with YouTube, and I have been on this platform for a fraction amount of the amount of time, and my subscribers almost are neck and neck with where I am on Instagram. Not to mention my views are out of this world and you wanna know why? I mean, I like to think I create engaging content. But really it's because I see YouTube as my partner. They see me as their partner, right? And so, so many of my views, y'all, come from them recommending my videos. Compare that with Instagram that will hide your content <laughs> because of the algorithm. And the most important reason why I should have given this platform my time and attention, and I highly encourage you to do the same, is because it self-monetizes. Y'all, I did not know this for many, many years. I fell in love with YouTube probably about five years ago, like watching a lot of content creators here. And probably for the first three of those years, I had no idea that people were getting paid for this content. Now, obviously, you could do sponsored, like, you know, hey, here's the coffee cup that I love, right? You can do sponsorships and get paid by brands for that. But outside of that, if you don't do any brand content, YouTube will still pay you because of the ad revenue. Whenever you are seeing an ad on YouTube, that content creator, that YouTuber is getting a percentage of whatever YouTube earns from that ad, okay? Now it takes about 4,000 watch hours and 1,000 subscribers for you to start to monetize. It sounds a lot more daunting than what it is. It took me probably about eight months to get there of like being disciplined and focused on creating one to two videos a week. But once I got there, once I got there, YouTube was like, oh, you serious? Like you came to places and we got you. We gang gang. <laughs> And so they just started to really amplify my channel in a way that I could not have done on my own. And so as a result, I have earned between $65 the first month I was monetized all the way to $3,000 from YouTube ad sales alone alone and for me that is a great stream of income by doing something that I love and that I am passionate about. I have the heart and the spirit of a teacher. Like I used to be a classroom teacher, okay? And so when I sit down and I share content with you all, uh, it very easily, honestly, could have been a blog post, right? And that's why I think my titles tend to lean more SEO forward because I am giving you information that people are going to search for on the platform. YouTube is a search engine at the end of the day, okay? 
And so if you are someone like me who has a heart of a teacher, if you are someone who is comfortable in front of a camera or you don't mind being in front of a camera or learning how to become more comfortable, then trust me, sis, trust me. Give YouTube your attention. <laughs> Give it your attention. And even when it seems like it may be hard for you to grow, it definitely is a platform that I find privileges consistency above all else. So that is the first stream of income that I feel like no one is talking to content creators about. The second stream of income that I think no one tells content creators about, and it's a shame because more of us should definitely have these, are ebooks, y'all. They are ebooks. And I have two. And I've shared with you all before that I really see ebooks as almost textbooks. So think of yourself as a content creator if you were adding value as you should as a professor, as a teacher. So when you go to class, that is your lecture. That's your YouTube video, that's your blog post, etc. But what your professor is teaching from is a textbook. And that is what your ebook amounts to, right? People consume information in multiple forms. People digest information in multiple forms. And they need to be able to interact with you in multiple ways. So if someone is watching a YouTube video that is about uh, the top secrets to interior decor, right? Or how to style, oh, you know, do a style overhaul of your bathroom for under $5,000. If they're really drawn to that concept because they're learning and they want to learn more, they have been engaged by it, for them the next step, which is a pretty low cost investment, would be something like an ebook. This is a concept that many business coaches call a value ladder. You got your free resource and then you have one step above it. And for me, that next step has been an ebook. And I think about this all the time because some of the creatives that I love the most on this platform, they are teaching. I'm talking about free college, free college. Give us that next component of your platform. Allow us to dig in even deeper. An ebook is such a great source of passive income, y'all. Um, my latest ebook, How to Declutter Your Wardrobe and Curate a Closet That You Love, has done very well for me. I'm getting probably about $600 a month from that. Not a huge chunk of change, but I appreciate it. I appreciate it because I created it last year and haven't had to do anything else. Nothing else. I mention it in a YouTube video. I link it down below in the description box. And when I'm asleep, somebody in the UK is downloading it. It is a great passive stream of income that I cannot recommend enough. And honestly, the investment does not have to be too high. All you gotta do is go to Canva. That's all you gotta do. And for mine, what I think people appreciate the most as well, my other one, uh, the 21 Day Happiness Project Toolkit, is that they are like workbooks. They're not very text heavy. They're not very dense. I've included pictures and, you know, found ways to make it feel interactive and less daunting. And that's what people appreciate from ebooks as well. Nevertheless, there are, I'm sure, a myriad of resources on um YouTube about how to create an ebook. I highly recommend y'all dive in deep there because if you are a creative, you need to give people a way to pay you. Period. Give us a way to pay you. Everybody you know wants to buy something from you or they know someone who does. And an ebook is a great stream of income. Now the third stream of income that no one is talking to content creators about is also something that I don't see a lot, but I do see a little bit more than ebooks, and that is hosting webinars and courses. Webinars and courses. I have done both. So one-time webinars and also courses that have been, you know, multi-engagements or had multiple engagements involved in them. Either way, I think once again, we're going back to adding value to your community. If people are constantly coming to you for a specific type of content, then hosting a webinar, a one-time webinar, maybe just to kind of test the water. Let's say you charge $35 for a ticket. I just saw one of the YouTubers who I love do this. Uh, she had a one-time webinar about uh, how to shop your closet, for example. And she creates a lot of content around sustainable fashion and sustainable clothing and kind of maximizing your wardrobe. 
people have questions about how to do that and outside of her YouTube content I would love to sit down and to be part of her audience and have her live teaching those principles and actually like workshopping those pressure points that people have and providing a solution in real time. It is a brilliant idea. Not only that, the second thing I have done with my webinars in the case of my bullet journal webinars for example is I have saved them or recorded them pop them over in my shop and now you can download them y'all you can download them and it's a webinar replay that then becomes a passive stream of income and y'all this is so easy it is so easy you can sell tickets on eventbrite they will take a small fee so tickets on eventbrite eventbrite will even allow for you to embed your link Right before your webinar starts, you uh, people will receive the link. I use Zoom. They'll receive your Zoom link. And then you just get in front of your computer and you talk to your audience. You engage. You teach. You facilitate a conversation. And one thing I know for sure is that people love to talk about themselves. They do. And so give your audience a platform to be heard. Give them a platform to be seen. And a webinar is a great way to do that. Now, of course, it's something different. It's a bit more involved, okay? Uh, I have hosted like a beta group before. I used a platform called Teachable. Um, I plan to relaunch this course using the data that I learned from the beta group very, very soon. Um, and so it does take a bigger investment, but you also charge more for a course, okay? It can be pre-recorded or it can be live. Either way, webinars, courses, you are adding value to your audience and again, they are going up on your value ladder. So I got the free resource. I'm putting you up on game. Listen to me now. Take notes. I got the free resource that I have gotten from you. I got the ebook. Oh, I love the ebook. I learned so much in that. Now, I want to play in the sandbox with you in real time. Let me get your webinar or I need to learn more. Let me get your course. Okay, so we are going through again a sales funnel and this is something I think that the Marie Forleo's uh, Amy Porterfield's of the world those people who teach you how to create um, online businesses and brands, they get, like they understand that. They have become millionaires, daggone near billionaires, doing what I am teaching you right now. But here's where we are lacking. Content creators have not followed that same recipe and I wanna break that kind of disengagement and really help us to understand if you are a content creator, you are an online business. You are a solopreneur. Use those same principles, sis, to get your bag. The next area of income is to create physical products. Physical products. Now, I have done this in multiple ways, you all. Uh, many of you know that I am the high priestess of Thotlandia, okay? And I have a whole myriad of products around what I call white toenail season. Last year, this launched with water bottles, uh, with journals, and with totes. Stay tuned, those are coming back with a revamped logo, okay? And I also partnered with another black woman-owned business called Quinn Parfumes on a number of products, and those will also be maximized as well this year. But for now, they are a candle and also a reed diffuser. Absolutely love partnering with them, and the white toenail season fragrance is chef's kiss absolutely divine okay and so the reason i think that you need to have products y'all is because it's just another way of monetizing your likeness you do so much work as a content creator if people bang with you they want to be a part of your tribe of your community they want to be like oh girl me too girl you know i love me some da 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 oh girl i got that same thing because you know we both love this part like we all want to feel seen and valued bring people into your community by allowing for them to have physical manifestations of your products of your community and that is what a product is for and so if you are someone like me who finds the process of having to um have huge amounts of products in your house that you don't know if they're going to sell or not and then be responsible for the packaging and the shipping it's something i'm starting to get more open to but when i started it it made me very very nervous okay and so what i did last year was i used a plugin on my shopify page that is called printify and they are drop shippers y'all so all you have to do is upload your logo onto printify find a manufacturer that is going to create the product that you want to 
to be created. And once someone goes to your shop and they buy the thing, Printify then works with the manufacturer to get it shipped to your customer. You have to do nothing. Not one thing. Now, because you have to do nothing, you are definitely being charged up for it. There is a pretty high premium on not having to deal with the production costs on your own. But it may be worth the investment if, once again, you are just not into having a large amount of production time for your products or paying up front a lot of the production costs. Either way, I am so excited to continue along this path of creating my own products. Um, you all have been so excited by them. I am so grateful for every single person who has purchased any of my products. Uh, I love to see you all tagging me in the reviews and in your unboxings. Again, you just want to create community, y'all. Now, I want to say a note before I conclude, which is that if you don't want to go the route of creating your own, partnering with a company that does it is another great way to do it. And when that happens, you just determine the split, usually in favor of them. It might be 60-40, it might be 70-30. You determine the, sp the split in favor of them in order to have them create a product that is in collaboration with you. So if you were someone, for example, who once again is really into home decor and there is someone who you love who creates pillows, maybe you collaborate with that person to create your own branded pillow. Or it may be like I do with my reed diffusers and my candles and soon to be my fragrance. Yes, I am coming with the fragrance in collaboration with Quinn Perfumes. They already have the candle game and the home fragrance game on lock. That's what they were doing before I even came in contact with them. Allowing for us to work in concert has meant that I've been able to work with someone who is the expert in their game. I don't know how to make a candle. And for me, it's not worth the investment of figuring it out when I could just collaborate with someone who is already doing it, okay? So this does not have to be an overwhelming task. I know the old me would have been like, oh, I ain't doing that. I don't know how to do that. But trust me, it does not have to be that hard. Figure out how you can create your own products and make sure you ensure that the quality control is there, obviously. It's not all about getting money. Once again, it is about adding value. And the last area of income that no one talks to content creators about is something that I have yet to launch, but it is coming soon. And that is to create your own online community. Now, I think we kind of get this in the space of Facebook groups. Many of the big content creators have Facebook groups and their audience interacts there. But we, what we are missing are the paid platforms, okay? I think about somebody like the comedian Kev on stage, huge on Patreon. There are other people, huge Patreon networks. And if Patreon is not the online platform for you, there are others, okay? Mighty Networks is one that me and my team have been looking at. But the purpose of a paid community is so that you can have a place for those people who are your writers. I'm talking about your hitters. Those people who are right beside you, who love all of the content that you put out, they are your armor bears, they're gonna protect you from the trolls, they're gonna share your content. There's something about who you are that has resonated with them deeply. You have a soul contract with those people, okay? And so they want to find a way to interact with you on a deeper level. It doesn't mean they have to know all your business. You don't have to like get on live every day in your pajamas. But what it does mean is it takes you from the space of creating content for the masses to creating content for this group of people that really, really bang with you, okay? Your writers once again. Also, what I think about in the, in the example of a paid community is that people are putting specific content there that no one else sees right we can get so caught up in just creating for consumption creating for consumption emulating what somebody else is doing that we forget we have given so much away for free so much of ourselves and i had a business coach tell me very early on you're giving away too much you're creating blog posts every week you're doing this you do tips and uh, you, you're, you're creating IGTV videos. I was really big on creating those at one point. I don't know why because I wasn't getting any coin from them whatsoever. Okay. <laughs> Again, this is Instagram cult. So, um, having that paid community allows for you to put yourself and your resources behind a 
paywall. I recently heard the sister who created for Harriet talk about that recently. She said, I know y'all haven't seen me a lot on social media or on YouTube for that matter, but that's because I've been behind the paywall. Okay, the people that ride with me, they've been seeing me every day. You all just haven't because you are not a part of that network. And I do not believe that there are enough content creators, especially in the fashion space, especially in the fashion space, who are doing this. Be on the lookout. I will be launching a beta group hopefully sometime this fall. But here's your plug, sis. Again, now we're talking about our value ladder. So let me go through it one, one more time. Our free content, our ebook, our webinar, our courses, our paid community. Okay, and I put paid community up here because there is a monthly subscription attached to it. People can withdraw at any time. But over the course of that paid community, you could have earned tenfold what you earned anywhere else. Again, these are the people who also, who also are the ones who are more likely to buy and engage with everything else underneath. They are going to sign up for your courses. That's where you want to promote it. And, and if you can, house it in the case of Mighty Network, right? They are the ones who are going to download your ebook. They already got your ebook. That is why you want to put them into a paid community. And that is it, good people. I hope you have enjoyed today's video and you have found it edifying. If so, give it a big thumbs up. What have I missed or what questions do you have? Drop a comment down below. In the meantime, I will see you, good people, across the internet. Peace. I would stand up and walk away like I usually do, but girl, I don't got no pants, so.